Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by the superbly versatile EQB, the all-electric Mercedes-Benz, impressively techy, surprisingly roomy, and available with seating for up to seven. The vehicle all-electric, the feeling is all Mercedes. Learn more at mbusa.com slash EQB. We will settle on our poll question first hour. Next hour, it's hot dogs and hot takes. As we bring in Dan Orlovsky, ESPN football analyst, part of NFL Live, and they're extending it to two hours on Mondays this football season. Dano with uh, Marcus Spears, Ryan Clark, Mita Kimes, Laura Rutledge will be there for the Jets and Niners on Monday in Santa Clara, 3 Eastern on ESPN. Great to have you back on. Are the Chiefs on scholarship this year? Meaning are we giving them a pass type of thing? Even if they have a slow start, they lost to the Lions last year, opening night. Uh, yeah. You know, they they could have lost to the Jets. I mean, they struggled a little bit there. Mahomes didn't play great during the regular season. So Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, go back to last year. I don't think the Lions winning down there was that surprising, you know, just because the style of play. I do think the people being out in that game, Chris and, and Travis, had their part. And then, obviously, the story of the season, which was one that – everyone teetered back and forth on was it going to matter or not was the drops and the penalties. And, and that was really why Patrick didn't play to Patrick's level and all that. So, um, you know, it's silly or it's, it's odd to think that the team that won the Super Bowl is a better football team this year than they were last year. But I don't think it's even close that they're a better football team this year, as long as Hollywood and Xavier worthy are healthy players, because just the, the, the ad, addition of speed. Now they got, I was saying this yesterday. I mean, Patrick is by far the best player in the NFL, right? Most important player in the NFL. He's got a rookie starting at left tackle. I mean, you can make the case. We often have the conversation, who's under the most pressure in the NFL? That left <laughs> tackle rookie from BYU, Bob, you know, he's he's got a lot of pressure on him. So, you know, we got to see what that looks like. But I do think if if they play to, you know, the way that the talent kind of aligns it, they'll be a better football team. So, the expectation, you know, they're the team to beat. But I wonder if it's pressure or motivation to try to three-peat. If I said pick one or the other for the Chiefs, is there pressure to three-peat or is it motivation to three-peat? Uh, I think it's an obsession to three-peat. You know, I, I don't, you know, they they are, Patrick has long been different when it comes to the way he viewed his career. I think that's why he took that long contract the same with Travis, the same with Andy Reid. I think there's this obsession to go do it because no one's done it. I think for Patrick, it he realizes that places me firmly into the conversation with Tom Brady like because I'm I've done something that he's never done. Obviously, Tom has the longevity in the seven. So I think there's an obsession within that group, within that organization to go get it done. I don't sense a ton of pressure. Um I think it's more them wanting to go do something that's never done before. When do you make your Super Bowl pick? I've made them already. I actually shared them to ESPN yesterday. Okay. Who wants to guess Orlovsky's Super Bowl picks? Todd? Dan Orlovsky has the 49ers beating the Chiefs and keeping them from the three-peat. All the right. End. Seton O'Connor. Uh. Eagles, Chiefs. Eagles, Chiefs. Marvin. Chiefs, 49ers. Okay. You guys are boring. Paulie? I think he's got Ravens, Niners. Ravens, Niners. Hot. I think he's got the Lions in there. Lions, Who went, Lions Chiefs. Who went second? It's Seton. I got Chiefs, Detroit, I think. Yeah, Chiefs. Chiefs Detroit. No, was that you, Dan? Yeah. Chiefs Detroit. Yeah, I got Chiefs Detroit in the Super Bowl. I think I had the Chiefs winning, though. Um, I took my AFC championship game was Kansas City Houston. And then my NFC championship was Detroit Philly, I think. Um, and I, I had Kansas City beating Detroit in the Super Bowl. Give me the surprising team who doesn't make the playoffs. Start with the NFC. Mm, surprising team who does not make the playoffs. I feel like I've been adamant about this. The Dallas Cowboys, I think, is a, a and justifiably um, just because of all the different pieces, excuse me, that are part of their football team. You know, there is obviously the narrative, the pressure of, 
you know, the contract situation with certainly Dak and Mike McCarthy, but, you know, their offense is going to start two rookies and all accounts seem to be like they're going to be good players, but it's it's a different animal being those guys on a consistent week to week basis. Their running back room is a lot left to be desired. Defensive tackle still a question. Inside linebacker still a question. The Deron Bland injury still a big deal because he's going to miss the first, what, four, five, six games. So I think a lot of the defensive pieces are missing, specifically Dan Quinn as well. I think Washington could finish second in that division. So I would say the Dallas Cowboys are one. I think the NFC North is going to be the best division in football. So I don't think Dallas and Green or Detroit and Green Bay miss it. Um, but I think you could have a really good Minnesota Vikings team not get in type of thing. Um, uh, what about AFC? I, yeah, um, the AFC. Uh, I think Kansas City's in. Um, you like Buffalo Dolphins? I lo- I don't like the Dolphins to get in. No, as much as I love their football team, um, the Dolphins are in a tough spot because th- it's going to take them a little bit to start this season to get truly healthy. We'll see where Jalen Phillips, Jalen Phillips is. Chubb's got to come back from the injury. I think a couple pieces on their offensive line, but then in the assumption game where everyone or when everyone gets healthy, their final eight games are absolutely treacherous. Yeah. Like they're. And I, you could you could be a good team and not win one. It's it's that daunting of a schedule. So it doesn't set up well for them. So I could see Miami missing out. I think Buffalo makes it just because how Josh Josh will be so great. But I have concerns with the Milano injury. Baltimore, I think Baltimore is fantastic, obviously, but Baltimore's got a lot of question marks. You know, you're replacing fifty percent of the best inside line, linebacker duo in ball. You're replacing three offensive linemen. You're replacing a defensive coordinator. Um, they have my attention for sure. Dan Orlovsky, ESPN football analyst, NFL live expanding to two hours on Monday, starting at uh, three Eastern as they will be on the road in Santa Clara jets and the 49ers. You have the jets are always going to be interesting with Rogers being there. They have a lot of talent. They did win seven games and they had zero quarterback play. Yeah. Hard to, it feels like you're you're trying to troll people if you pick the Jets to be great this year. Like, do you get that feeling? I mean, it's a good roster, and it really depends on – I'm not comfortable well, I, with the I coaching, but Rodgers yeah, being healthy. I would say this, Dan. I don't think it's trolling because I, I would ask you, how are the Jets not good this year? Like, if you just took the roster, the talent that they have, and we're, we're honest about the talent because that league is about talent. How do they not? How are they not a good football team this year? You would say number one, some of the key and or pivotal pieces get hurt. You know, if, if Tyron Smith doesn't hold up, but then I would say, well, Fashionu can maybe play there. Um, let, uh, uh, Garrett Wilson gets in, hurt, God forbid, or you know, Aaron Rodgers gets hurt again, God forbid. So you you sit there and go, well, it's health, but then I could say that for everybody, and then well, the coaching. Uh, offensive coaching, we could make, we could have that conversation, but then you go, well, Aaron Rodgers, and he's got to give you some confidence that that won't be maybe as bad on the surface level. So it's hard for me outside of health to see how the Jets aren't a good football team. And it also, you go back to Buffalo, it feels, I think Josh Allen's got second best MVP odds, and it feels like he might get more credit the better they are because they may not be as loaded as now they could be better, but I think with Diggs not there, I mean, we might look at Buffalo as an underdog instead of a favorite like we have in recent years. Yeah. Because you know, the, the favorite of recent years, I think was coming off of that AFC championship game with, with Patrick and whatnot. Um, I, it's hard for me to see Josh win MVP, just because Josh, if you're not Patrick, you're you, everyone thinks you suck type of thing. So, you know, people are going to find ways because Josh's style of play as well. I do think that there will be a more consistent offense. I do think that Josh is capable of becoming that second version of Patrick where he plays a little bit of that point guard mold. That's what's going to be necessary. It really comes down to their defense. And I don't want to minimize, like Poyer and Hyde were the, as good a duo as the NFL and Milano's is spectacular. So you're talking about losing 25% of your defense to really high end players. So I think they're still the favorite in that division. They are, um, 
but I, I want to see how the defense looks more so than the offense. Could Josh Allen change his style? At this no, and stage? he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to, though. He doesn't have to. And it, and I have said this since I think we had this conversation maybe about, you know what, Cam Newton and Carson Wentz a little bit, just onto the football field. He, Josh has a certain skill, a certain physical talent that that if you don't play – to that way, you're making him a lesser player. Over the course of time, you might have a game or two stretch where you adjust it because that's what's necessary. But over the course of time, you don't, you can't change that style of play, nor do you want to, because the highs are as high as anybody. And there might be some lows along the road that you sit there and go, God bless if this didn't happen. But you, you, you're not paying him for that. You're not, you didn't draft him for that. And you don't have a chance to win the Super Bowl because of it. What's your policy on starting rookie quarterbacks? Um, the number one thing is, are we capable of supporting them so they can survive? Are, are we capable? I think the rookies and the quarterback needs three things. They need a really good scheme and play caller together. They need a, a plus offensive line and plus skill group. I will always go back to, if we looked at the rookie quarterbacks that have come in and played at a high level, I'll go to CJ Stroud last year. Okay, did he have a plus scheme? Yes, the Kyle Shanahan scheme. Bobby Slowick, we didn't know if he was a good play caller. Turns out he is. Did they have a plus offensive line? Yes. Now that scheme helps that offensive line some because of the play action. And do they have plus skill group? Absolutely. That's why part of the reason why CJ. Um, if you go to Dak Prescott in 2016, had one of the greatest offensive lines in the history of football. He had Jason Witten, Hall of Famer. He had Des Bryant, might maybe in the conversation for Hall of Fame. He had Ezekiel Elliott. So just – remarkable support group, Ben Roethlisberger, Russ Wilson. So they all have those similar traits. Um, so that's like the surrounding parts. Those three things got to be in place. Second, he has to have something about his game that allows him to survive early on and then thrive. It's either unbelievable processing. It's remarkable athleticism. It's lights out ball placement. Like he's got to have something in his game. And I think the third thing is, he better be, you better be darn sure that he can handle the suck of it, the failure of it. Because in college, you're not often going to walk into that building on a Monday morning being the reason you lost. In the NFL, you will. And you better be able to handle that mentally. All right. It's time for hot dogs and hot takes. You don't get the hot dogs, but it's time for you to provide us with a couple of wild predictions this year. Okay. Now, now you don't have to believe in it totally, but just okay. Just something I, that would I can be, be convinced into it. All right, a little fun, a little fun. All yeah. right. Um, so let's start in the NFC. Give me a hot take. Uh, Washington wins the NFC East. Okay. Um, I think Jaden Daniels wins Rookie of the Year. Washington wins the NFC East. Philadelphia stumbles out of the gates, and there's chaos in Philly. So I'll I will start with that one. Uh, the second one is. The NFC North gets three playoff teams in, and it's not Chicago. Uh, Detroit, Green Bay, and Minnesota all make the NFC playoffs, and Sam Darnold becomes a, oh, my gosh, Sam Darnold doesn't stink at football conversation narrative. Pretty good um, here, right out of the gate. Yeah, a couple of yeah, games. Yeah. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams win the NFC West. That's not that crazy. You know, San Francisco, obviously, the favorite, but the Rams win the NFC West. So, I think those are probably what my my NFC ones. Okay, give me it, AFC now. Um, Jacksonville wins the AFC South. You know, the whole conversation this offseason is Houston, 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 and Tennessee gets Brian Callahan, and Jacksonville hasn't been talked about a lot. And Trevor Lawrence is in the MVP conversation. So uh, finally takes that big, giant leap. Um, I have a fun one for the AFC West, but it's a little bit attached to college football as well. Um, AFC North, I'll sit there and say um, – I think that's it for the AFC that I have fun wise. Well, what's the AFC West? All right. This is just like a, a, a hypothetically fun one. <laughs> I could see. This sounds like a Harbaugh one. Yeah, yeah. I could. See, so I, I think I was a big proponent of Antonio Pierce getting that job in Las Vegas. Right. But yeah. I don't, I don't think they're going to be a great football team. Good defense, great football team. Hypothetically. They get into back end of September, October-ish. They're not playing well. There's, the future doesn't look promising. Trade Devontae, 
to the New York Jets for a number one next year. They become the number one pick in next year's NFL draft. They pull a Houston Texans and they take at number one Shador and then at number find a way to use that second first round pick to get to number two and take Travis Hunter and both of them go to Las Vegas. <laughs> How about a round of applause for Dan Orlovsky? That's hot. That's, That's how you play. Yeah, Man, I want that one to hit. I want that one to hit. Damn. I like that one. And uh, it's on the record now. It's not one of those, hey, you had a fun pick. No, you actually believe the Raiders and this guy and this and this and this, the dominoes yeah. that have to fall. Now, yeah, one, yeah, that's. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to get a couple social media ones off that. Now, once again, this is just a hot take. This is having fun. Yeah. Yes. Don't yeah, want you yeah. to lose credibility, Dan. I don't want but, that. But if it hits, it oh, was a yeah. serious second. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Yeah. You can take a victory lap. Uh, yeah. Safe travels. Thanks for joining Thank us you. as always. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. You guys are the best. Thanks, bud. That's Dan Orlovsky. Uh, NFL Live, two hours coming up on Monday this football season. Marcus Spears, Ryan Clark, Mina Kimes, Laura Rutledge. They will be in Santa Clara. Jets and the Niners. That'll be Monday. They'll start at 3 Eastern on the Mothership. Take a break. Play of the day coming up after this.